welcome, Grassroots oh. Church. <laughs> Your heads. I'll go down here. Grassroots Church, we are so glad you're here. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy morning here in your bed uh, to join with us in church. Uh, we are super excited and thrilled that we get to do this over technology. Um, and yeah, just have some fun with it. I'm going to start first by praying, praying for our world and our church as we go forward in this crazy season of life. But anyways, Jesus, come and be with us this morning. Uh, I pray over our, our pastor, our worship team, as we get to worship you via technology. We're so thankful for technology and the way we can build community with it. Be with us as we go forward. Um, be with our country and our world um, in this world that's crazy and un confusing at times. Uh, just bring healing and bring your spirit. Draw us closer to you um, and whatever may come in these next few weeks. We love you. We appreciate you. And be with us today over Facebook Live. Amen.
right, church, let's go ahead and pray together, and then uh, I'll, 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 I'll keep going with the message here. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for uh, giving us the technology uh, to still be able to gather uh, uh, in your name. Lord, I pray that, that this could be a blessing for not only our our congregation and our uh, people, Lord, but that, that, that this could be a blessing for uh, many people who are, who are watching with us. Lord, bless uh, your word that you're going to bring to us this morning. Speak to us through uh, your holy scriptures and speak to us uh, through me, Lord. Thank you uh, and bless the rest of our time together. In your name I pray. Amen. So good morning, church. Good morning, Rockford, Illinois. For those of you who don't know, who I am, and if you're tuning in with us, joining us for the first time, I'm Evan Savage. I'm the lead pastor at Grassroots, and this is uh, this is a really unique uh, thing that we're doing here. We don't normally, obviously, we don't normally videotape our stuff. We don't uh, mess around with video too much, other than we make some YouTube videos. But uh, we are. This is something new for us. I think not only is this new for us, but this is new for a lot of our uh, a lot of our country in general some things just seem to be uh kind of closing down slowing down stuff like that you know on thursday uh, i get a message that our city's going to hold uh, uh city leaders and health leaders are going to hold a press conference kind of shutting us down for at least this weekend you know it's sad if you live here in rockford because this is the first big festival weekend that we have, and so we had uh, Patty's Fest, we had the parade, they were gonna dye the river green, and all that stuff had to get shut down, and uh, what was supposed to be a festive atmosphere ended up being kind of a fearful atmosphere. People didn't really know how to react to this, and so this is new for us, but as a church, this gives us a really cool and a really unique opportunity that could cause some excitement. Uh, I know around our city right now, we have a lot of houses that are gathering with neighbors and gathering with friends and gathering with people uh, who are joining in and, and watching this and joining in worship together. And we get to live, literally we get to get an opportunity to live out our value uh, to gather. We want to engage in community both inside and outside of a Sunday service. You know, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of pastors that I've had conversations with in the past few days that uh, we weren't sure if we were going to shut down, all this conversation. And the thing that kept turning back, the thing that kept that we kept bringing up to, to one another is that the church is not a Sunday gathering. And even though we love to gather, and I'm heartbroken that we can't gather physically together, that the church is so much more than a Sunday gathering. And we get this unique opportunity to worship with our neighbors, to worship with our friends, and to continue to worship with one another. And so if you're joining us, can somebody get me water? <laughs> As everyone coughs, and everyone <laughs> stares at everyone for coughing. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we've been doing here at Grassroots in the year 2020. In the year 2020, we've been diving into some bigger theological ideas, really solidifying a foundation of what we believe. So in January, we talked about uh, who is God, and we spent five weeks talking about who God is. Uh, we talked about how God is a good God, and God is a great God, and God is a transcendent God, but an imminent, a hearer. God, and we talked about how God is Trinity. What does it mean to worship a God in Trinity and in unity? We talked about that that first series, and we just wrapped up our second series about what God does, and we talked about the creation story in Genesis chapter 1, and talked about how God is creator, and that God created everything to be good. And then we talked about God's providence and his continued work in the world, and how his work is for the goodness of the world. Everything that God does actively in the world today is for the goodness of the world, to push us back to that perfect goodness. Then we talked about the elephant in the room and the problem of evil. How does God allow evil? How could a good God and a great God allow evil in the world? And we talked about 
that. And last week we talked about how do we participate. We're called to join in on this work that God is doing. And this week, for the next two weeks, what we're doing as we get ready, gear up and get ready for Easter, kind of the big celebration of the church every year, uh, we are talking about humanity today and uh, also next week. You know, the reason why we're putting it in right here is because in order to understand who Christ was, we have to first understand who God is as, as in theological terms, and then we have to understand who, who humanity is. As Christians, we believe Christ is 100% is God and 100% man. So in order for us to understand that, we need to understand those two things first. You know, I remember in the 90s, uh, at the late, in the late 90s, it was kind of the tail end of the Disney Renaissance. If you've never heard of the Disney Renaissance, uh, there were about two or three decades where Disney just made bad movies. Movies that weren't fun. People didn't go to the movie theater to watch them. They, they, they kind of got away from the princess thing and got more towards like storybook type stuff. And uh, it wasn't just a, it just the movies were kind of a little bit boring, not exciting. It wasn't like the days of Snow White and Cinderella. And uh, so Disney was going, uh, coming into the 80s, they were going to, uh, they were on the verge of shutting down their animation studio until the group of people came together and said, we're going to start making good movies again. And they started making a series of really good movies. Beauty and the Beast, uh, uh, The Great Mouse Detective, which is my personal favorite movie. Um, and we get all these really good Aladdin, we get Lion King. But at the tail end of the 90s, at the end of this renaissance, before Pixar became king, uh, there was a movie that I love specifically for its soundtrack. And that is none other, none other than Tarzan. Uh, the Phil Collins soundtrack is phenomenal. If you just go, there, used to, there was a mu music video at the end of the movie with Phil Collins singing, uh, Will You Be In My Life? Is that what it is? Right? Is that the You'll song? Be You'll, You'll Be In My Heart. That's the song. <laughs> um, right? And so uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a, I just love the movie. But the story of Tarzan is actually a really interesting one. It's, a, it's about a nobleman by the name of John Clayton II. And John Clayton II is a baby and his parents die and he's left in the jungle. And what happens is these group of essentially gorillas, they're called large apes in the book, but uh, these gorillas come and they, and, they, and, they, and they care for and they raise Tarzan. And in Tarzan's mind, his whole life, he just sees himself as a hairless gorilla. He walks on his knuckles like a gorilla. He does the hoo-hoo thing like a gorilla. He does all of these things as if he were a gorilla. And so one day as he's swinging through the vines in the jungle, he stumbles upon another hairless gorilla, but she was wearing funny clothes, and her name was Jane. And as the story goes, and you've probably seen the movie, Jane goes through a process of teaching Tarzan what it means to be human, or to her what it means to be human, how to stand up straight, how to speak English, how to hold utensils and drink without spilling, how to do these things that we think are uh, just natural human things to do. But as the story goes, Tarzan missed the jungle and eventually Tarzan wanted to come back to the jungle because it was his home. But the story really begs the question about what is humanity? What does it mean to be human? And I honestly, I couldn't think of a better time to be talking about this as our world seems to be fearful of each other. People are fearful when people cough. They're fearful to the point that there's no toilet paper at the thing. There's People are just full of fear of each other. And the reality is, is that humanity, you know, we know we could, we could quote James and say God does not give us a, a spirit of fear, which is true. But humanity tends to, in times of crisis, tends to grow, especially in recent years, tends to move towards the way of fear. And I don't think we should be doing that, obviously. You know, so if you have your Bible, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 2. We'll get there in, in, here in a minute, but Genesis chapter 2 is the second creation story in the Bible. The first one is Genesis chapter 1. The second one is Genesis chapter 2. And they're very different Stories. Genesis chapter 1 is more poetic, and it's teaching about this good. It, it is good. It is good. It is good. It is good. It is very good. That's kind of the point of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 2 is more of a story where it's a zoomed-in view to kind of look at uh, creation from a different perspective. And it's, and it's, and it's one that, 
that truly pinpoints, uh, it shows us that creation is really connected in a way uh, that Genesis 1 doesn't really talk about, and how animals and human beings are both created from the ground, from the dust of the earth. But before we get into Genesis chapter 2, I want us to talk about the importance of studying humanity, especially in theology. One, it teaches us how to be better humans. As, as theology is built on the study of God, but in reality it's how do we as human beings understand and relate to God? How can we express ourselves as human beings in light of understanding the Creator? And so the study of humanity in many ways is central to the study of theology. You know, obviously we are all human beings who are watching this. Maybe your dog's sitting next to you and he's watching too, but we're all human beings and, and we're all humans that are, that are here and, and created to worship the Creator. And we believe that this Creator, as John 1 tells us, became flesh and dwelt among us, and that in, in, this, in God, in the Word of God, as in John 1 describes, that there was life and it was life was uh, the light and it was the life of mankind. So in order to truly understand Christ and his work, in order to truly understand God and how we relate, we must understand humanity. The reason why humanity, there's a few reasons why humanity is, is uh, uh, taught or why we teach it and why we discuss it. First thing is humanity teaches us the, uh, about this idea of the imago Dei or the image of God. Right, we believe that God created us, Genesis 1, I believe it's verse 26. God, uh, God, God created us. He says, let us make man in our own image and likeness, the Imago Dei. But what does the image of God in humanity, what does this doctrine of the Imago Dei really do for us? The first thing that it does is it places human beings as creatures. We are creatures. We're not not creatures. We are spiritual beings, yes, but we are creatures. Genesis 2 verse 7 says God formed man out of the dust of the earth, the ground, the thing. And then over in verse 19 says this about animals. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground the same thing that man was formed, all of the wild animals and all the, bir and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man so that the man could name them and whatever the man called them, each living creature, it was its Name. You see, we are creatures. We, are, we share a, a biology with other creatures in this world. Um, it's, you know, we, we understand this scientifically through things like DNA and, and, and genome studies and stuff like that. So the first thing of understanding that we need to understand when we understand the Imago Dei is, one, we are creatures. Number two, uh, and building upon number one, is even though we are creatures, we are the greatest of God's Creatures. And, and when I say greatest, that's not that we are we are lifted higher than other creatures, but we are great. We are given a greater purpose than other creatures. We are given greater responsibility than all of other of God's other creatures in this world. Verse 15 of Genesis 2 says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. We are called to, uh, we are given this special purpose, uh, and a lot of times we call, we call it dominion. We have dominion over, but dominion literally means simply to take care of or to look after. We are created, and the greatness of, our, of, of humanity is that we are given a special purpose to love creation and to love and to live and to dwell with God in his creation. You see, uh, I, I heard a thing the other day is that uh, creation in general was created with us in mind. That there's a special purpose because it is for us to dwell with God. The third reason why we study humanity is because, quite frankly, everybody agrees humans exist. Humans matter. Look to your neighbor and say, you exist and I see you, right? The, this idea where, where it's, it's, it's we uh, human beings exist, and that, you know, not every everybody might not agree that God exists. A smaller faction would even say that Jesus never existed, or question his deity, or things like that. But everybody agrees that humanity exists, and that humanity has value to it. 
that we value humanity, we value life. This is why we talk about things like great evils, like genocides and wars and terrorism, and they break our heart, and we rally around these things to try to fight these things because we believe humanity has value because we understand the existential nature of who we are as humans. So look at the situation we're in right now. As we, as we begin to separate ourselves, we force ourselves into a little bit of isolation stuff, or we try to, we, we're being asked to not gather uh, in groups of 25 or more, especially in the, in the city of Rockford itself. And we do this uh, somewhat, there's, some, there's a fear factor to it, it's more of a caution factor rather than fear, but we do this because we have value for our neighbors. And we have value for the people around us. We want to stop the spread of virus so that we can stop the spread of unnecessary death in this world. Human beings hold value. So a few things that I want us to understand. I'm not going to take too much time because we have, uh, we have groups of people throughout the city that are going to share lunch and stuff together after this. And I want to make sure that that is something that we are going to do and it's going to be important for us to do. But a few things that I want us to understand about human beings in order to understand how we ought to understand ourselves better, right? Again, like I said, the image of God, Genesis 1, 26, is we are created in God's image. There is this idea, a lot of people for forever, if you grew up like I did, uh, there were a lot of people who taught that this was like arms, legs, hands, feet type image, like a physical image, and that's not what scripture tells us at all. Jesus, in fact, says the Father, the, Jesus, in fact, says God is spirit. And so this is idea of a physical form. It's not what the image of God is. Uh, the image of God has also been called this rationality. God is a rational God, and this image is rational. And yes, that's part of it. I believe so, but that's not all of it. Some other people would say that God is a creative God. And therefore, the creativity, the natural creativity that human beings have is the image of God. I would say, yes, it's true, but that's not all of it. That's part of it. And other people would say uh, commun uh, community and communal living. And, and God, you know, the, we, when we talked about the Trinity a few weeks ago, that God lives in community in and of himself. And that God brought out of his own community, he created us for community. And I would say, yes, that's it, but it's not all of it. I would say that this combination of rationality is able to choose yes or no, or this creativity, this, this ability to create things like music and our, you know, this situation we're in right now, it's so hard because we're not gonna be able to gather for a couple of weeks to enjoy things like music together, to enjoy things like art, to, to enjoy sporting events, to come and be a part of these things, this creativity that the world has. So it's rational, it's creative. The communal nature of who we are as human beings truly comes from who God is, the image of God as a communal God, as a, as a God who wants us. We, are, we need community. The hardest thing uh, for us right now is that we're being asked to not engage in the normal life of community that we have. Um, you know, the greatest punishments that we have in this country, other than, like, say, the death penalty, would be solitary confinement. It's, it's you, don't get, you don't get to uh, interact with other human beings. You're forced to be alone. You're forced to dwell within your own mind. And the community that human beings need is taken away. And so I would say the image of God for sure is communal. But what does this mean for us as Christians? What does it mean that as humanity, we are reflections of God, if you will. We, we are bearers of the image of God. Simply put, is that we are, because we are made in this, God, in this image, this God image, that we have the ability to choose, one, we could choose yes or no, we could choose right or wrong, we can make decisions, this rationality here. So we have the ability to choose, but it's the image of love in our hearts. It's the image of grace in our hearts. It's the image to care. It's the image of compassion. It's the image to, to not choose hate, but to choose love. Love your neighbors as yourselves. 
You see, we take on certain characteristics of God. This is what the image is. And these characteristics, if, if you go back and listen to some of the last few, uh, last couple of months of podcasts, these characteristics of God as a God who is a good God, God who is a great God, God who is pushing the universe, pushing the world back to goodness. And it's our participation, in our participation, to do the same, to take work to do the good and the will of God. You see, in our world today, um, we must realize that all mankind hold the image of God. That, that mankind in general was created with the image of God in them. And so when we look to our neighbors or we start picking fights, political fights, or start talking about faith versus non-faith, any of these things, we must recognize that the person across from us or the people who are reading our posts or the people... Who, are, who, who we might be hurting, they hold in them the image of God. You see, in our world today, uh, we must look around and, 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 and look at our friends and say, yes, we all, all have this image. And it comes down to this idea, this thing that I think is plaguing our society, and it's, and it's this identity crisis. How do we identify yourself? You look around the world, everyone's trying, especially in the United States, Everyone is trying to identify with something. Do you identify with your sexuality? And how do you identify with your sexuality? Do you identify with your race? How do you identify with your race, your gender, anything? We try to figure out ways to identify. And, and all that God is calling us to do is saying, I want you to identify yourself with the image that I created you with. And that is the reflection of who I am. You see, our, identi our identity is not found in our lifestyle. It's not found in our love lives. It's not found in our family lives. The biggest thing, biggest thing for parents, the biggest hurdle for parents to deal with is placing your identity in your children. Because one day your children are going to leave, and they're going to go create families, or they're going to go do their own thing. They're going to go off into the world. And if your identity is wrapped up in that, it's going to be a struggle for you to get past that. You need to live, my wife and I, Heather, we, we try to make sure that our kids are not as important as each other, that our identity is found in God and that we make sure that this thing is stronger, that our, if we don't want to get wrapped up in the kids because our kids, if we raise them right, they're going to go and they're going to do their own thing. And so if we identify or place our identity in the kids, it's just, cr just creating a world of hurt and coming down in the future. But we don't identify. Our identity is not found in our kids. It's not even found in our marriages. My, my wife cannot be who I identify myself with. I cannot be who my wife wraps up her identity with. We must understand that our identities are wrapped up or should be wrapped up in our creator. In our current status, this world around us, I fear so much of this is getting lost, that we are trying to identify with things that just, that, that, that cause us not to realize the image of God in our lives. And I come back to this isolation, you know, a lot of these issues right now is about isolation, but I hate to break it to you, we've been isolating ourselves for decades. We've we, 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 we focus too much on social media. We don't get out and into the communities and love one another. We are generally fearful of one another. Malcolm Gladwell just wrote a book called How to Talk to Strangers. And it's about this, about how we, how we tend to be fearful of people. And in reality, statistics show that we shouldn't be fearful of anybody. I hope, Malcolm, if you're watching, I hope I said that right. <laughs> So I want us to rest in that. I want us to rest and know, especially as Easter draws nearer and as, as we, hopefully all this virus stuff will pass, as Easter draws nearer, that we can come together and worship like we've never worshiped before, that we can identify ourselves with our creator like we've never identified ourselves with before, that we can show the love and the grace and the mercy of God in our city. You see, Grassroots Church, it's our vision that we go into the city of Rockford to make disciples of all people. So that, so that they could see the love of Jesus in this world and that through this forced isolation or through this forced whatever it calls social distancing, that we could see that, ah, yes, no, the image of God is in our community. And the image of God is, how, is in how we relate 
to one another. One thing I want us to stop doing is stop taking sides. In closing here, I'll close up here. Wrap up, I know you're hungry. We're going to wrap up real fast. But we are asked in so many ways to take a side. Conservative versus liberal, faithful versus faithless, Republican versus Democrat, straight versus gay, whatever it is, we're asked to take a side. And what God is saying is stop trying to worry about the sides. Focus your identity on me. And your identity in, with the love and the grace and the compassion, the mercy of God, as it falls upon you, that you begin to transform into your identity that is God. We talked about uh, a, a few months ago here at Grassroots that that we that 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 we are our spirit, our lives are transformed as we are renewed through our minds, and we are renewed, we are transformed into the image of Christ. Our identity is found in that. So in this world, let us recognize God's image in all people. And let us work to bring and make the image of God, the grace, love, mercy, redemption a reality. And as we get gear up for this virus to be done, as we gear up, uh, hopefully in a few weeks, hopefully it doesn't last too much longer, hopefully uh, the, smart, the smart science people can figure this thing out quicker. Let's pray for that. Let's pray that this thing can pass quickly as possible. I hope that we, uh, I hope that, that when we come back together, and if you're joining us for the first time, you've never joined us in, in person, you know, we believe in-person community is best. So I would encourage you to join us, keep, you know, like us on the social media so that you can see what's happening. But I would encourage you to come and engage with us. But I encourage us as a church, let's be in prayer for the image of God to become a reality. So I'm going to pray real quick, and then we have a couple of announcements, and then we'll release you guys to go and eat with one another. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for technology. Thank you for our community of faithful believers, Lord. Lord, I pray that, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us put our trust in you. Lord, I pray for the city of Rockford and the surrounding areas. I pray for our nation, Lord, that, that as we're trying to deal with this virus and the world, Lord, as the whole world is trying to deal with how to react and how to, how to put an end to this virus, Lord, I pray that you will give us hope, that you will give us strength, and that you will give us the knowledge that is needed for us to fight this. Lord, help us to not dwell in fear. Help us to not live in fear. Help us to not uh, hate people, Lord. Help us to love with the radical love like we've never loved before. Lord, I pray again for uh, this community specifically, Lord, that you bless us and you continue to keep us safe, Lord. Lord, keep us healthy, healthy keep us safe, uh, and that you, Lord, help us to look forward to that time that, that we can feel comfortable coming back together and safe coming back together worshiping in body with you. In your name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> all right, real quick before y'all head out to eat, we have a few announcements. First of all, um, the Rockford Alliance Against Sexual Explo Exploitation event, better known as RACE, is still on for March 28th. Um, be up to date on social media, Facebook and Instagram, for any info um, regarding that event. Um, but we are really looking forward to spread the gospel to our community in that event. Um, donations can be brought to the next time we are together. This event really is in need of some community support. Um, so stay tuned for that. Next we have Easter. Just one month from now is one of the coolest events in our faith. And we as a church get to celebrate the coming, um, the coming of Jesus to die on the cross for us all. Um, bring a friend. This is gonna be a really great opportunity to just live into this idea that we are the image of God and to be surrounded by the presence of Rockford. Uh, we really hope to see you guys on April 12th is the date of Easter, if you didn't know already. I didn't know until this morning. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, if you are a regular here at Grassroots, if you call this church home, we welcome you to go give online at grassrootsrockford.com. Um, we can't make this all happen. We can't be on Facebook without all this, um, but we really need you guys, and so go and do that. 
Otherwise, that's all we have. May you guys live into this image of God. Imago Dei. <laughs>